Alright, so, continuing on showcasing the Season 1 DLC for a theater without the final bar line. The, the way it works, it's interesting, you buy the season pass and then every couple weeks it lets you download and play more music that is, as it releases through the season. So, part one was the beginning of the saga series. Part two here is, it's really, I think it's only like four tracks from Live Alive. I actually had to look that up because I've never been sure how to pronounce that. This weird... It came out in 1994, which was a very weird time for Squaresoft, in which they were just making a trillion games. They had just made Final Fantasy IV and Chrono Trigger, and were working on Final Fantasy V and VI, and like Bahamut Lagoon, and like all these, all these crazy games. They're just kind of all over the map, kind of like Square Enix is today, where they're just releasing hundreds of games and seeing what sticks. Um, but this came out originally on Super Famicom. It, it, it just came out last year on Nintendo Switch. So people know it exists now, I guess. But at the time, I remember like researching it, and it was like, I have no idea what this is. You, you, you're like seven or eight different characters, and you're all throughout time in space but like in the real world like you get to be a caveman but you also get to play in medieval Europe and you also get to play in uh, you know 980 China and you know also in Japan at a very specific time and then in the present day but then also in the future where there's like a psychic boy none of it makes any sense to me um, but what's important about this game is that it is the first soundtrack done by Yoko Shimomura um, after being contracted by Square. So prior to that, she burst onto the scene with Street Fighter 2 uh, doing the music for that, and that was just, like, huge, and people still know Guile's theme and, like, iconic soundtrack. And then Square's like, we're just we're just gonna pick her up right now, and we're gonna put her to work on this weird, crazy RPG that makes zero sense. So to be fair, like outside of there, there is a guy, the guy that the main two people that worked on this, like worked on Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy IV. Technically, not in any real sort of way, but they had their hands in it, and then they decided to do this and it never got a sequel and no one <laughs> never got ported to <laughs> oh yes sorry uh just to acknowledge chat here for a second because i'm rambling on <laughs> about what i think about this give me one sec oh this is so unprofessional of me i don't even have my twitch things going on this is so sad usually a lot more prepared than this. I think. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I already, I already <laughs> it was something about ro <laughs> ro Robo-Ocalypse? Ro Robopocalypse? It's a thing that Michael Bay is making. Um, I figure that the storyline to Live Alive it's it's got to at least make more sense than Robo Apocalypse. I st I don't know which has a better title, but there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities there between <laughs> between those two properties. Uh, I hope I hope there's a, a wonderful composer for Michael Bay's upcoming Live Alive adaptation called Robo Apocalypse. I don't think it's going to be Shimamura. Anyway. Oh, Arcos, right, yes. This is a combo stream now between... Let me get back out of this for a second. A combo stream between talking about Yoko Stromora's foray at Square. I actually, I don't know if this soundtrack is any good. I feel so bad. I was saying, I was talking to uh, fellow streamer Zythanon earlier, 
And I was saying, like, I had no idea that Shimamura did the music for this, and it's just so embarrassing. Because I have... Oh, and I'm going to get a channel, and chat's going to give me a challenge. I'm excited. Um, it's so embarrassing, I had no idea she did the music for this. So I don't know if it's a good soundtrack. I know it's her first soundtrack with Square, so I don't know much how much control she had over it, uh, if she had a defining style for it yet. I imagine when you're just given a project that's like, hey, this game takes place during like 10 different periods in time. Some of them are real, some of them aren't. And there's some sort of omnibus theory that ties everything together, maybe. I don't know how you compose a soundtrack for that, so I imagine it's going to be kind of all over the place. But I'm curious to hear uh, chat's challenge that they're that they're posting. While that's happening, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and pull it up. I have this sorted by difficulty for a very specific reason, for the record. I, I've been playing this game now. I haven't been streaming, but I've been playing it for about two hours because I was completely obsessed with getting uh, a perfect all-critical chain, which in Melody of Memories... I feel like I did quite a bit. I know it was very hard, but like it seemed like I did that a lot. Uh, I I ended up doing what did I do? I I did. You're not alone. In Final Fantasy IX. And I actually I don't think I'm gonna be able to listen to that song ever again, which is really sad because I really like that. And I I listened to it for about two and a half hours. this one because it's a short track and because it's very simple 4-4 four, four, I felt like I could keep the beat going it's a field track man yeah after two hours I finally got all critical so this is my reward I was playing some DLC all right so let's see the challenges improvise a plot summary of Michael Bay's upcoming Oscar <laughs> yeah Oscar bait Robopocalypse <laughs> as separate from the book it's adapted from while trying to triple S these songs. Oh my god, is that a challenge? <laughs> I love that it, I love that the chat likes to call this Oscar bait. Robopocalypse. God, what a name. Like that's even beneath I wanna say that's beneath Michael Bay. But it, it's not. Like, it's it, once you hit that low of a bar, there's no going underneath it. <laughs> Sorry, this is DLC. It's... That's right. Cormac is the main character's name of Robopocalypse. I don't know if there are other characters. I think the other characters... So the quick plot synopsis I was sent, because this was a big deal earlier today. <laughs> Which you're looking to see what Michael Bay was doing, because why not? And he's working on something called Robopocalypse uh, that's, that that stars our, our hero Cormac. And I don't know, and he's fighting AI. AI is the enemy now because it's always that, right? In the, in the 50s, like the existential external threat was you know aliens and ufos and then it was robots for a while and now it's ai and it's whatever we're gonna relate to and i guess be scared of and the ai's name is arcos and the only thing i know is that cormac towards the end of the war uh finds this present left by them arcos i guess and they uh and then he goes, and he, and he, and it's a memory box. And he's like, I don't like this memory box. Or wait, maybe I do. And then he watches the memory box. And it's like a hero collection of all of the battle's greatest moments. But what I can't, what I don't know, and I didn't want to get into it earlier. But I, I don't know if who's winning the war at this point. Like, I don't know if Arcos is winning and this is just sort of a screw you box. Aha! Look at all these times you failed. Actually, I'm, I'm, never mind. I got the plot. I can do it. All right. So I'm going to be... You, you say that, chat. You say it's AI that's winning the war. And you're probably right. 
I was the way I read it was that humanity was winning and that this box was some sort of trick. But I don't but I didn't know how. So you're right. The war is long over. Well, if the war is over, then why are there human survivors? Oh, because they're not actually robots, despite the title. The AI is forgiving and lets humanity kind of live. Not in, like, the Matrix kind of way, in which they let them live so that they can harvest them. But I guess they just let some of them live. I don't know. This is going on too long. All right, I will try this on Expert. The AI is merciful. Yeah, that's what distinguishes it between other other villains. So this was, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, AI is very merciful in a lot of things. So the last thing we played in DLC was Arctic Rhythm, and that was insane. So now we are going to go through, let's see, one, two, three... Megalomania was a breakout hit, I guess. Not the one from... What am I thinking of? I'm thinking of something else, and this is really sad that I can't remember. It was, it was this huge memetic song from Undertale. This is not to be confused with the song from Undertale. No, it's not, I know. <laughs> that being birds fly, fish, what they do. It actually sounds familiar. And then go, go, steel titan. Was exclusive, I guess, to the HG2D remake. Oh, that's going to be my new favorite song of all time. I'm going to go through them in order. And if you could just picture what's going on with Cormac in the box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do them all. <laughs> but I'm going to start with Live Alive. Alright. So like, yeah. Arcos has won. And it's like, here's your... Consolation Prize, which is a box of memories of all your heroes being slaughtered. And he has the guys like sharing it with his friends. They're really like sad at first. But then, the more they watch, they get inspired by all the heroes that fell in vain. Whatever. And then, they have like one last chance of beating Arcos. The twist is that Arcos knew that all along. Because it's merciful. And then there's a dance sequence. Heroes, yes. I'm, you know what? I don't know if I'm really sorry about talking during that track. It was a challenge, though. Yeah, I always have to do a challenge. 
It's really, oh, it's absolutely going to be iRobot meets Footloose. Um, and they're going to call it Robopocalypse just to get, just to get people in the seats in the theaters. But really, it's going to be this heartwarming tale of watching all these people die. And then Cormac's like, you know what, I will teach you how to dance. And Arcos is like, we knew we could not live without humans. Um. But I was actually listening to that track while I was talking over it. Um, I don't know. It seems pretty standard for the era. It doesn't really seem... I mean, it, it's good. It doesn't really seem like it stands out in any cool way. No, uh... No, no. Arcos was planning on it. Was planning on it. That was the whole thing. The whole thing was a trap at the end. To get the main characters to teach them to dance. That's why it had to send them the videos of all the, their friends that died. Come on. Basic storytelling 101. <laughs> Trap dance. Anyway. I'm gonna go some fishing. Birds and fish. I, this is this sounds like a There's no way I've listened to this before. I might have somehow. That's funny chat, yeah. <laughs> um, but it also has kind of a Shimamura vibe to it. It's like, I, I imagine that's the one where they go to ancient Japan. One of the tracks there, at least. That actually did have a Shimamura kind of feel to it. For the record, I did not beat the challenge because the challenge was to triple S while I tried to come up with a plot for RoboCop Apocalypse. But I did triple S this. <laughs> this is going to be fun, I can already tell. This is where you fight in the future, but not for or against the future. I'm sorry to people out there. This game might just don't really get cut.
I did have an X Files reference there. I okay, so that song was some Street Fighter Two all the way, except for that awesome organ solo they had kind of in the that is so show. You replace that with now usually that is organ and like that is so distinctly show. That was very cool. Otherwise it's just Street Fighter Two. Still still pretty fun. But now's now's the real time. Because it's go, go, steel titan. <laughs> this is going as a fighter. Wow, that house is on fire. Okay, so the comment from chat there in the middle of the song was, this is so Hanjuko Hero. It really was. And, and it's so weird because my only knowledge of Hanjuko Hero uh, was from Uematsu doing the soundtracks to them. <laughs> and I guess I should mention that uh, the creators of this game did work on Hanjuko Hero, which is like this really bizarre egg battle game. I don't know how to describe it. It's also insane. But what's so weird about that is, like, I wonder... Because, like, Uematsu did, did, did the other Hanjuko Hero stuff. And then it's like the creators came in and it's like, we have a design. We have, we have, we have one request for anybody that's composing on our games. And it's that it sounds vaguely like this sometimes. And both Shimomura and Uematsu delivered. I'm actually really curious to see that <laughs> that was the most Hanjuko hero thing I've heard of. <laughs> that was uh, one of the most mid-90s Japanese things I've ever heard. Alright, so I'm really curious to see who did that specifically. <laughs> Remix of the Live Alive theme. <laughs> that's true, I don't know. Yeah. I think he was more surprised than anything. I think this might just be. I'd have to listen to them both. So there was a time where uh, Paul Streamers, Ithan and I, uh, Ithan and I went and we got to meet a lot of our favorite composers, and, uh, in, including uh, Uematsu. Um, and we both had our, our, our dealings that day of, of pride and shame. One I had bought, I brought with me a Play Asia bootleg version of Yasunoi Mitsuda CD. And despite the fact that he was selling his own version there, 
I had just brought mine that I got off of Play Asia, and I was like, look how cool I am. I've had this for like 10 years. And he looked at it, and it was just such a deep sorrow in his eyes. It was Kirite, it was the album. And he very reluctantly signed it. And uh, Zaithanon brought the Hanjuko Hero 3D. I think it was 3D. I just went 3D. Soundtrack for Uematsu to sign. Yes, I am. <laughs> Uematsu was just more, more confused than anything. He was confused and excited about a lot of things that day. Mitsudo was more just sad, profoundly sad. <laughs> Arnie Roth was profoundly angry, as always. Alright, so that's the DLC for part two. I will say, um, as, as I'm wont to do, uh, any other requests or challenges, I will do something on Ultimate. I will, I will try something on the screen. I've, I've unlocked almost like everything, so. Yeah, no, Uematsu was, he was, he was con pleased and confused at the same time. I, I don't, I can't imagine him getting angry. I mean, he had to have at some point when he told Arnie Roth to stop, just stop arranging my music, You're, just stop it. And... For the last couple distant worlds, he's just gotten other people to arrange things. So, I even in that, I imagine he just was very polite about it. Narnie Roth, just like, how could you do this to me? I left my career for you. not going to do 10 2 unless forced. The worst. And like the 13, the sequels to the 13 games, like after playing through the 10 2 tracks, like it was such a relief to go back to Masashi Yamazu, and that should never be the case. Like there's these weird. It's this weird, like, semi-techno, semi-acid jazz nonsense. Gull wings? Alright. I'll try it on. I'll try it on the ultimate. This is, it's so bad. Ugh. Like, embarrassingly. I'm curious what, um... Ryan would have to say about this, because I know he ended up beating 10-2 and said that it actually wasn't that terrible once you get past a lot of stuff. I can't imagine playing, playing through it with this just being the background music. I don't know who the gull wings are in this game. It's probably them. Probably Yuna and it's hard to do this when there's no real beat to it. That makes sense. Do you think like this is just like there, there's maybe more serious music later on or whatever? There's not. It's all this. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put this on expert because you really, yeah, <laughs> you had to be there when this is. 
whatever kind of amazing drugs they were on. This this song really gets good about halfway through. They really kick up the funk. They don't tone down anything else. They just kick up the funk on top of everything else that's going on. like the uh, <laughs> the action bits are like trying to get you to groove into the music and it's impossible wait for it it's not good yet Oh man, we oh we get to miss the sax solo. That's a that's a that's a shame. <laughs> I'll do an all ten two stream at some point, and we can all share in that together. But I'm I'm not going to share that out loud. <laughs> if you watch the chat replay, that's 100% how you, the only way you can appreciate that to really, really get into the moment with that hairstyle photo magazine. The good times you have with your ex. <laughs> that's oddly specific, but 100% accurate. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys around. 